Today we're doing a quick overview tutorial on Tecla structures and the Grasshopper components that Tecla supplies to link in with Tecla. So as you can see, I can adjust the Tecla structure output in real time through Grasshopper. And I'll give an overview of all of these elements and how they integrate. I'll also show how you can get items from Tecla into Grasshopper. So therefore you've got a two-way transfer between the two programs. Okay, so I'm starting off with this parametric structure here. If you want to see videos on how to set something like this up, have a look at some of our other videos. But this video is intended to show the Tecla integration rather than going through the whole setup of this parametric script. So if we go to the outputs of this script, I've grouped them together so that we've got the trusses the longitudinal roof members, secondary beams, primaries and columns. Oh, and I've also got the an outline for a slab and some footings down the bottom. So the first thing you'll notice once you get the Tecla Structures plugin is you'll get this toolbar here and you'll also get a menu in Grasshopper. So you can see I've got a blank Tecla Structures file here. It's just got a few grids in it. Now the easiest thing you can do is represent those lines of those trust members as construction lines. And you can do that with Edit Construction Object and it just takes geometry. So I know that these are my truss lines if I just attach them, you can see already it's brought them into Tecla straight away, which is pretty smooth. So similarly, a beam is actually not much more complicated. So if I use this beam component in the steel section, I can just bring these curves to C and I have to give it a name. So you can do this two ways. You can either manually give it a name, which I'll do here. And this is Australian sections. And there it's brought in 250UB26s straight away. The other way you might want to do it, it might be preferable, is in under attributes you've got profile catalog. And if you right click on that and say pick from catalog, and then say select, Tecla will bring up its whole catalog of sections. Now this is set to Australia as I said but it will be localized to your region and for example I'll select a 310 UB here say OK and I'll just replace that description there with that element and it's updated in the in the screen now you can see that it's actually really smooth so pretty smooth so as I adjust on the fly the steel is updating live in the Tecla window. So it's actually quite fast, as you can see. So I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to put some more beams in. I'm going to make them 250s, but I'm going to use, put in the um, longitudinal members and I'm going to put in some 
secondary beams. Now you might notice in Tecla that I've got that hashing which shows that there's an overlap so that actually shows me my script's got double members in there but I'll fix that later. <laughs> so secondary beams I'm going to put some of them in and I'll show you some other things we can do. So if I grab this component. Now, say I want that to that steel, that top of steel level to be different uh, in relation to the original line. Under attributes, you've got position, and I can attach that to position here. So you can see I can make it top of steel, middle or bottom. I can also offset it left and right. And if I want to offset it specific values left and right or up and down, I can give values to the plane offset, a rotation offset or depth offset. Another thing you can do is some deforming attributes. And one example of that would be cambering. So if I want to put in, I'll just use this text. Say I want to put a 40 mil camber <clears throat> in these beams. And I touch D. You can see that these beams have now got that camber in them. So that's really easy. Now I'll just attach, I'll get rid of the camber, some of the other beams, the primaries. And I'll do some columns, so if I go to Tecla, I've got column, I'll give it a name, so I'm going to select column section, you see, say a 200, okay, that's my columns in purple. Now I'll just show you one other thing you can do, <clears throat> in that you can bring this geometry back from Tecla into Rhino, which is also a useful thing. So I've got my Rhino window here, and what I can do is deconstruct. So say I want to deconstruct these beams here. I attach this component, and it gives me a curve, a profile, attributes etc. So what I can do with that curve is use it alongside another component which is profile contour. So I know my size, my PR size, attach it to that. Now this does take a little bit of time to work through. So it's created those profiles and if I attach curve to the location you can see it's put that profile of that steel at the start of I'm using the same curve um, that was import. So now all I need to do is use a standard grasshopper component which is extrude along a curve and I've got my outline which is 
C goes to C and I've got my curve which goes into B and you can see there I've got my curves in Rhino so then I can extract that uh, I can use that or bake it I can bake that to uh, Rhino and keep it there and send it off to other people or whatever you want to do with it I'll just get rid of that for the moment if I go back to Tecla I'll just quickly show a few other things one is footings so I've got some pad footings down here and remember that these footings are just short lines in Rhino and it's as simple as that likewise with a slab you just need to provide a boundary and this is my slab outline so there it is so you can see it's really really quick and as I was showing before it updates in real time based on your parameters which you're varying you can even see this cambered beam the curve is updating as you adjust it which is pretty cool adding secondary beams spaced changing the spacing on those so that was just a really quick demo showing how easy and quick it is to get structure into Tecla structures using Grasshopper and also getting stuff from Tecla into Rhino and Grasshopper the other way around the main areas that you're provided with uh, your basic parameters of objects steel beams columns plates and even assemblies which are a bit more complex concrete you've got beams slabs and panels walls even rebar and footings editing allows you to cut steel so you cut it on an angle um, you can put penetrations in steel stuff like that your attributes allow you to pick standard sections and also deform stuff like the camber that I showed and then extract allows you to bring stuff from Tecla and use their components and get it back into Rhino amongst a few other things as well so overall works really well uh, pretty quick and really a good good set of grasshopper components thanks for watching this structured parametrics video leave a like or subscribe if you found this useful and we'll see you in the next one